Hi there. Um, I'm working on some replacement pieces on my movie realistic clone armor. And one of the hard parts of that build is uh, making all these seamless joints. You get two halves and you fit them to your arm and then you have to finish it so that you can't see where the seam was. Um, and usually you do it with some Bondo and you know filler primer and a lot of sanding and you eventually get it to this point. Um, I had a lot of issues when I first started making the armor, especially on the thighs and the ad plate. These long seams that I would finish and sand and finish and sand and they would still get a crack line down that joint. And I think I, I figured out, at least on that armor, a lot of times um, through trial and error, what was causing that. And what it was is, um, if you have a, a good strong connection inside the curve where it doesn't move at all, um, you're not going to have a problem. So this seam should be fine. But other seams, um, there's a little bit of flex if you push on them because there's a little gap between that plate and the curve. And sometimes that's just the nature of the curve. It's a slight curve and there was glue in there, but it went to the edges and you sort of have a little overhanging cliff that will allow some flex. So even though I could fill that gap and get it smooth all the way, as soon as it's dry, if anything pushes or flexes it, there's room for it to move and so it's gonna crack right at that spot. So what you need to do is somehow make it so that um, your seams are reinforced underneath and can't move at all, can't be pushed on. If there's a little bit of an arch there, they'll always be able to flex just a little bit, which will let it crack again. And you can't get glue, or a, I'm sorry, you can't get filler into a gap that's that tight. So what I do um, when I have one of those trouble seams is I'll go in and take an X-Acto knife or gouges, like a V-gouge, and carve it a bit wider so that there's a bit of a trench there. And I can put epoxy putty or sludge, ABS sludge in there, press it in, and that will mushroom out under those cliffs and reinforce it so it won't be able to flex anymore. So once that's reinforced from underneath by having a gap big enough to get something in there, um, then it won't flex afterwards. You could also fill it with glue, but glue will be trickier to get Bondo to stick to. I find it's better to use sludge or epoxy putty, something that will really bond with the plastic and create um, a, a filler under that little miniature cliff, if you will. Okay, so I widened this gap on one of my flexible seams that was probably going to crack by taking an X-Acto blade and widening that opening so that more of some kind of filler could get inside there to support that ledge. Um, you can use either epoxy putty or some kind of plastic weld stuff. I'm gonna be using ABS sludge, but it's a little trickier sometimes. Um, but the whole reason you're doing this is so that when you apply it to the top, it's not just meeting a set of butted edges, but rather it can go down into that cavity and hopefully mushroom out with some pressure to either side to help support that flexible seam. So here's the one I'm gonna do next. Um, you can see I've widened it about, I don't know, two millimeters wider, just to, enough of a gap that um, the stuff will get down. I'm using ABS sludge, which is just kind of a homebrewed thing that a lot of makers use by taking your scraps from trimming all your armor and just some hardware store acetone. You could use nail polish remover, but it would be much more expensive and this stuff is sort of industrial and basic. Acetone dissolves ABS plastic, so uh, you got to be careful and not um, get it near your armor. But um, that's its advantage too. When you d dissolve a bunch of these scraps by putting it in a jar and, and leaving it for a couple hours, it turns into this sort of white, creamy stuff that uh, you can make it very thin. I like it about this thickness, which is um, a little easier to work with for me. Um, and you basically have a substance that's made of the exact same plastic. It's the same color white if you're using it from the same maker. And it... Uh, it will basically weld the two surfaces in time. The, the acetone that's in this substance will meet any plastic it touches and melt it briefly and bond with it along that edge. So, 
how I do this. You kind of have to work quickly, but it's not like a, an exhausting, dangerous part. I, uh, I, I take some of this. You have about five or 10 seconds to kind of apply it. And you just smear it on there. And you're not done when that's applied. This is just how you get it there. Um, you can feel it start to get a skin on it fairly quickly. So once you put a little bit more of that on there, um, while it has a skin, you can touch it within a few seconds and it usually won't stick to you. Um, you can give it a little blow if you want it to have a skin sooner, but I've got kind of a, a little paste up on top. And once you can tap it and it won't stick to your finger, you can kind of push on it. And it's like a, a bubble of liquid filled um, goo and it will force that goo down into that crack and to either side so you can just kind of push it and shove it and you can see it still has like you know it's got a skin on it but it's not dry it won't be dry for a couple of hours or cured it's not really dry but um, you can see my seam still moves and wiggles so this is forcing itself down into that crack and if you keep pushing it enough times, you can see that a lot of that substance is now gone. It's a lot flatter than it was because it has gone down into that chasm. So let me do a few more and then we'll see what it's like when it's all done. So I'm just finishing up this last little stretch and you can do this exact same process with, you know, some epoxy putty where you mix the two parts and then apply it. You'll make long thin little snakes and just jam them in there and hope it fills that gap. The reason I like sludge, especially in this case, is uh, for one it's, it's actually sort of welding it together and when you grind and sand this it's just going to be the same white underneath, um, which is nice. Um, it also, it's not going to be perfect, it's going to be a little bit porous, um, but it, uh, as opposed to doing something like filling that gap with CA glue, Whatever comes after will want to bond to it just as well it will bond to, as it will bond to any plastic. So whether it's filler primer or Bondo glazing and spot putty, anything you put on top will want to bond to this ABS just like it will the rest of the armor. And it's basically free. There are all these scraps that you didn't need anymore from cutting your armor. I mean, I keep some of these long flat ones for other things, but all these little curved strips, um, for the price of one can of acetone I bought a few years ago, and it's still got plenty, I can keep filling my ABS sludge. When it starts to eventually off-gas enough that it dries out, you just pour a little bit more acetone and shake it up, and overnight it'll turn back into an even slurry. Um, if it starts to get too liquidy, you can just add more scraps, and on and on, and just keep your same sludge pot going for years. And it has kind of a, a nice, you know, working pace, because you can kind of as soon as you apply it almost, you can start touching it and tapping it and pushing it flat and into that area, which will mean a little bit less sanding. And, you know, it, uh, it is the same substance. So once I, I like to loop it over the edges too, to fill these little gaps like this has here, it'll just kind of help bond that. And um, you won't be able to sand it for at least four hours or so. Um, depending on how thick it gets, um, but this should fill that that um, trench that I made on both of these, and I will use a mouse sander to sand it flat. Still have to fill this one. This one seems like it was strong on its own and it didn't need it. So I'll show you what that looks like next. On my seam that didn't need to be widened, um, I do a lot thinner, lighter ABS just to chart sludge to just try and fill that one little gap and I sort of smooth it flat because I'm not really trying to fill anything other than just the, the beginning of the crack there. I'll still tap it in just to try and force it down into there and help it weld that gap shut. Okay, the ABS has cured overnight. Um, I first took a Dremel and just ran it down those high points on the seams just to give me a little bit less to sand. And next I'm gonna be using a mouse sander, just a simple small sander to um, bring them all the way down to flesh. 
Mouth sanders are great, but they do get hot um, as opposed to hand sanding. So I tend to do just kind of a quick 20 seconds down a seam, flip it over 20 seconds down the next, grab my next piece, 20 seconds, 20 seconds, and then back to the first. Um, the reason being that if it gets a little bit too hot, there's sort of a flash point where um, the ABS gets a little bubbly um, and then you have to sand it more and possibly patch that spot. So it's not worth dealing with. Um, it's better to just keep cycling through your seams until it's all done. Um, and of course, this is mask dust, so uh, it just gets dust everywhere and uh, be careful with that stuff. So here we go. So that's about how long I do on each um, and just keep going and going and going. Now you'll see it's definitely not finished, so it's going to take many passes like that um, before you get flat, but I don't need to film all that. I think you understand how sanding works, so um, I will edit to when I have a lot more done. All right, I'm all done sanding. Well, not all done. There's always more sanding. I got some Bondo filler and spot putty and probably some filler primer on these but the ABS sludge is all sanded and as you can see I have now a flat seam that's sort of one piece of plastic it flexes without any cracking because I've cut under that layer and and jammed that ABS sludge down in there um, so that it's uh, it's now a uniform piece and you can see it's pretty flat um, you can always sort of see where your gap was because it's a kind of porous version of ABS. ABS sludge is not the same as plastic that was, you know, cast in a factory in a perfect condition. So there's always going to be a little porousness, but that's fine because we're going to fill this with some Bondo at the end and it loves to stick to porous surfaces. Even these little kind of gaps that happen in some spots where it wasn't a perfect flush fit, that'll be no problem for the Bondo. Um, on this one, you can actually see where I ground down into the CA glue in, in a spot. Um, and that should be fine, but that's why I don't fill it with CA glue as a, as a solution to that um, undercut because uh, CA glue is kind of a shiny surface that won't be a, the easiest thing for Bondo to glue to. I mean, it, it'll be fine, but um, you know, a majority of it are these nice flat sludge seams that will be easy to fill and won't crack when you flex them because they're the same strength as everything around them. So. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this solves some problems and keeps your armor from cracking when you're out there trooping. So have a good one. Happy crafting. Thanks.